Hello everybody, welcome to Hanging With Bears, episode 649, I think. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's 649. Either way, um, welcome everybody. So we're doing a bit earlier today because we were talking to a bear direct from Germany. Um, so, yeah, should we, should we go? I'm looking forward to finding out what the German bear scene's like. Um, and ironically, the first person to come into the stream on, on um, a German theme is Toronto Dew Bear. So welcome. You win today's prize, which is probably going to be surviving. So you're welcome. Um, yeah, why are we doing it so early? It's, uh, we're doing... It, he lives in Germany, which is an hour ahead of UK. Um, so it's 7 o'clock here. So it's 8 o'clock for him. But then Owen comes on in a couple of hours. So by the time Owen's finished, obviously it's then kind of early hours of the morning. So it's... We're having to do European time today, but it should still be good. Um, it gives me a bit of a an earlier night, because obviously I'm usually starting after Owen's finished. So. Um, right, Rhineland, I see you. Give me one second, I shall send you an invite. Um, um, I'll accept yours, see if it takes one or the other. Uh, so yeah, as usual, everybody, any questions or anything, just stick them in the question mark button thing. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to finding out about the German scene and finding out about just the European scene in general, really, because obviously, even though I'm in England, we're, we're still an island, so we're, we're not, we don't mix with them a lot. Um, whereas I'm assuming like the, the, the European countries kind of like, I'm, I, I don't know, I'm guessing that they, they kind of, mix more with each other than than they do with England. I suppose it's more England and Wales, uh, England and Ireland, kind of had have their scene, and then Europe has mainland Europe has their scene. Um, right. Let me send that invite again. Just it, it it's just been spazzing out lately, Instagram. So don't worry, we do get there eventually. It just takes a couple of goes usually. So I've sent another invite to you. If you don't see it, um, just close it, jump back, jump straight back in it, and might kind of reset it a bit. But I'm oh, sorry, it says you turned on your video. Let me turn up my volume. Hey, stuntman bear, what's up? Okay, I can hear you, but I, I don't know what's wrong with my phone at the moment. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Um, but so long as everyone else in the chat can see you, I'm fine with that. <clears throat> you, you can't see me. No. I can just still see me. <laughs> like, I, there's no like break in the screen. Um, but yeah, yeah, just let us know in the chat. Can everyone see um, Rhineland? Yeah, right. People say they can see you, so great. That's fine with me. It's a shame because obviously it's you know it makes conversation a little bit tougher when I can't see you. But it, it is what it is. I'm, uh, Maybe you can restart the whole thing. Traffic. I tried it. I did it last time um, when I was with Bowler. I couldn't see him. Um, it did it. It it did it last year. It did it for a couple of streams and then just stopped. It was fine for like a year, and now I started doing it again. But I've cleared everything before the stream and and tried to get everything ready and set up. But it's just not. I don't know. But whatever. I, I blame the Jews. It's probably their fault. <laughs> uh, that's a uh, pretty unfortunate. Uh... But yeah, I'll be able to see you on the replay. So, like I say, just uh, it is what it is. So, so, so I can, uh, when you talk about England, I can do some tongue, uh, I can do some middle fingers, and you you will see it only after. I mean, you can, but it didn't end well for you last time, did it, when you started uh, poking England? So, you know. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. Just, just. Um, just while we're on that, what's the? Because I've always wondered, what's the 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 German like? What in school? What are you taught about World War Two? Are you are you kind of like taught like we lost, we've got, got to be humble, or are you taught kind of something different? Um, our education about World War Two is very religious. Right, it's like we were the worst people in history. We committed the biggest most terrible crimes ever mm -hmm. and we have to pay for it for the rest of our lives that's basically german history in a nutshell 
Right. So it sounds like goes with the British Empire. It sounds like we're we're doing the same things, just trying to make the population feel guilty about stuff that they had no part in. About colonialism in England. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it sounds like the same kind of tactic that they're using. Yeah, but I guess in Germany it's even more effective because mm -hmm. Germans want to be moral. They want to do the right thing, and Germans, their whole they are psychologically broken with that topic since basically elementary school. It's like a myth. You can't even talk about it in normal voice. You can't joke about it. You can't talk uh, just facts or neutrally about it. Then you're already seen as a bad human being in the education system. You always have to have that religious feeling, you know, about it. So is it is it taught as in if, um, because like I say obviously we we get taught a certain narrative of kind of like you know Germany invaded Poland and then there was Operation Barbarossa with Russia um, yeah, yeah. and then kind of and then and then kind of England had to jump in and save the day is the way it's taught to us. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> so are you taught that you were kind of like evil from the start or just that kind of things escalated a little bit or yeah i th think we we were taught that um, some collective madness came over germany and hitler was elected and then everybody was uh, i don't know on drugs on psychedelics right. and everybody lo loved the war everybody wanted to kill everybody like the Germans wanted to kill the people. It, it's like they, they, they taught us that our whole ancestors were brainwashed and tricked. Uh, right. I mean, to a degree, they probably were, but yeah. not like to, into total madness and disrespect of other people and other countries, you know. But are you getting a different story from like your grandparents and stuff, you know, people who actually were around then? And, and presumably fought in the war. Are you getting a different kind of story from them? Yeah, I heard actually some pretty tough stories from my grandma. Mm. She's going on to, she's 19 in June, uh, 90. <laughs> right. And um, yeah, from my other grandparents that are dead already, I had some stories too, especially from their relatives uh, mm. who were like special officers in the SS. Uh, and stuff like that. Cause my uh, my granddad was on my mum's side was Polish, and he he fought in the in the Polish army. Um, but obviously at the time Poland was kind of like half taken over by Germany, but half taken over by Russia, and they were kind of like they did agree to kind of split it, and then were fighting over it. Um, yeah. But my, my granddad always hated the Russians. Uh, way more than like he had, he had nothing against the Germans, and he was actually he was captured and put in a prison of war camp and, and managed to escape, um, and then came over to England. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he he was always kind of no, the Russians were the were the bad ones. The Germans were like when, whenever he kind of interacted with the the German army, so he was like they, they were fine, they were they were nice. But it, it, the Russians were like the horrible ones. They were the like if anyone was torturing anyone, it was the Russians. That was, was always what he said. Yeah, I think the Germans treated uh, the population in the countries that were conquered very civil. Mm. I think most of the stuff uh, that is talked about nowadays that they raped and killed and this and that is mostly fake, actually, mm. because uh, there are documents and everything that points to people in the German army that didn't behave and uh, brought the... The local population against the German army um, were totally like degraded and in some uh, cases killed and stuff like that. Right. So yeah, I mean, it it does sound like because obviously you're, the the stories that you're getting from people who were there are completely different to what you're being taught. Um, so it's I mean it, it is what well, every country will have their own kind of like propaganda that they they've got at school at the moment to. To make them feel guilty. I mean, in America, obviously, you've got the kind of like you know being white is bad, and you know all, all that kind yeah. of thing. You know, the, the treating of the you know the slave trade and stuff. Um, in England, we have the British Empire. In Germany, you've got the, the Second World War. Everyone's got like a reason to be sad. It seems that that, that they're teaching at school. Yeah, it's demoralization. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas it should be the other way around. It should be even if you're teaching it, even if even if the mindset is Germany did something bad, so never again. It should be teaching like how to how to not be like that, but in a positive way, like how to be productive, how to be you know, so that that this this situation never arises again. Same with with the British Empire, say with the slave trade. Do you know, it it should be kind of teaching a way out of it rather than just keep ramming home like how bad you were. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's what they want. Um, but I mean, so, so long as the, the the problem is obviously you know by the time you, you you finish school you've already got a certain amount of teaching that then people have to correct you on or or, or un, un, you have to unlearn it. Um, you know, it's the same with the the globe. It's the same with the moon landing. <laughs> I mean, all these things you have to wear. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Learn as an adult, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's a process. Uh, it's like you have to go through it. I mean, you don't have to if you're not ready for it, if you don't mm -hmm. want to find out about all that stuff. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> and at the end of the process, you have to be as calm, as uh, happy as before. If you yeah. think like, oh my God, there's so much shit uh, going on in the world, and then you have that in your mind all the time, and you feel treated badly, that's totally not working. Yeah, exactly. Um, just another thing, just on Germany, really quickly, and then we'll, we'll get on. <laughs> we'll get on to you. Yeah, um, sure. just, just ask whatever you want. I also um, have some questions about Liverpool. Oh, okay. Um, everything you hear isn't true, probably. Um, <laughs> the the last couple of years I've been on holiday to Rhodes in Greece and there's a certain area of Rhodes which is very popular with uh, Germans. It was something to do with like an evacuation in the Second World War or something uh, where they sent a lot of the German children out to like, you know, safer places. Um, and they went to this area in Rhodes and since then it's been very popular with the Germans. But there's a hotel there that I, I really like going to so we've been going there. Um, but basically all the guests there are German. So the, the TV in the room is all kind of German TV. So when I've been watching it, 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 it seems very kind of, very gay, basically, like German television. Like over, over in England, it's, it, they're, they're pushing the, the black, white, mixed race uh, marriage all the time. You know, all the commercials are like that. All the game shows, are, you know, there's always a, a black man or, or, you know, sometimes there's a gay or whatever. Whereas in Germany, it seemed to be, it seemed to be like, they were pushing the gay thing like a lot. Um, is that something that's that I've just kind of got the wrong end of the stick of, or is that what you're seeing? Actually, uh, to be honest, I didn't understand the place in the first in the beginning that you mentioned. Uh, Where Ro is it? It, it's Rhodes, which is um, it's an island, a Greek island. Ah, Rhodos, yeah, 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 Rhodos. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I I haven't watched German television for years now, um, but yeah, for sure, the agenda is probably even more ridiculous than in other countries. Mm. It's everything from uh, LGBTQ to a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <clears throat> what can, can I say? I mean, it's like brainwashing, for sure. No, it was it was just like a it was just a it it's it stood out a lot because obviously you know I, I don't watch German TV so it was just kind of it I was interested to see like, like what they're pushing and it was all just it was it was very whereas we're kind of very kind of like mixed families all the time it's yeah it seemed to be more focused towards gay over in in Germany but I just, like I said I didn't know if I, if it was just the channels I was watching. Yeah, I think that agenda really, really um, is pushed hard right now mm -hmm. because you know that a lot of the um, immigrants, especially refugees, come to Germany, Austria, mm -hmm. maybe because of the welfare system too. But um, yeah, that's the heavy load that Germany takes from all the European countries, uh, mm -hmm. all the refugees. Yeah. It's uh, are you getting them? Go on. No, go on. It's okay. No, I was wondering, are you getting um refugees from a specific 
country because we we seem to be getting obviously we're getting the Indians, the Pakistanis, um, and then we're, we're, we're kind of the, the, the shipping people. in now the, the kind of proper Middle Eastern um, refugees. So is there like a certain area that they're pushing into Germany or? No, it's like all over the world. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> I mean, from from third world countries for sure. Uh, probably less uh, less Indians, less Pakistanis. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any left. I think we've got them all. I don't, I don't think there's any more fees to have. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, let's let's see how 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 you started off because obviously it's your first time on. So you know how how did you first hear about Owen and the Bears and and what was your journey to to where you are now? Wow, that's a pretty big question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, the beginning of when I wanted to know about how the world is working and t- took a look behind the curtains and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was around 2017, 2018. Right. I'm, I'm 34 years old now. And, and uh, I was studying psychology at the time. And Mm -hmm. I looked into sociopathy, psychopathy, and from there, I don't know the text or article or whatever I read, but at at one point I made the jump from sociopathy to Freemasons. (laughs) Right, okay. And then I I looked into Freemasons, and then I looked into Satanism. Right. And that was such a whole topic I was so occupied with all that kind of shit Mm -hmm. for quite some time and after that like my whole uh, spiritual process uh, started and also truth process started right were you on your own at this time like or or, you know did were your friends into the were they discovering the same things at the same time and family and stuff or or were you kind of like the only one uh, good question. I actually never thought about that. Right. Um, I think I think I was the only one at the time, and then some close friends wanted to not lose me on some to- uh, topics, conversation topics, yeah. and uh, also looked into it to be able to have like a nice little conversation and stuff. So uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think I was more or less the only one that looked into it at the time in my circle. At least, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, it sometimes it goes that way. I mean, I, I I had I had a similar experience. I was like the one who was into all that, and most of my friends didn't really care. But it mm. it never really caused any any arguments or anything at the time. It's more it's more recently that it's caused kind of more of a division. That the divide seems to be getting absolutely. Bigger. Yeah. In 2017, 2018, when I talked to people about it, maybe they did didn't have the imagination to think about it theoretically, to let the thoughts get up and stuff, but there was no polarization like today. I think that only came from the corona thing. Yeah. When together with corona, they deemed everything as crazy and extremist and dangerous. Well, that was the thing. I mean, they they had to, didn't they? So they had to demonize the other side. so yeah, and I think the the people who were who were scared of Corona or, or or just you know believed it full, you know believe the whole story, then they obviously you know that you're then the bad man. So anything you say doesn't count anymore. Um, yeah, I experienced that uh, very early when I um, when I left the party of Chancellor Merkel. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, you know the the party of Chancellor Merkel mm-hmm. is supposed to be middle right, you mm-hmm. know, and I always was, was like a uh, middle right to right guy in the political spectrum. So I left, left the party and went to a more like dirty party. Ah, I think Toronto Jew Bear asked a question. I think he asked if I ever looked into if Hitler was a Freemason. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have some sources that 
I mean, German sources, uh, original sources, are probably the most accurate in the world, I would guess. But when I compare them to English sources about the Second World War, Nazis, Hitler, and stuff, but I think there is quite some knowledge out there, but it's not sure uh, whether he is or he isn't. Mm. And I'm like about Hitler, I'm basically on the same stance as Owen. Uh, oh, we, yeah. Yeah, like whatever that stance is <laughs> um you know uh i don't know i don't know i mean it's hard with hitler isn't it because the the you can see both sides of the argument where it, it kind of he was trying to in theory he was trying to keep germany german and, and keep you know the, the the foreign influences out and you know to 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 push german industry and all this kind of thing to to grow germany but at the same time you know if the as the story goes he then led them into multiple wars and you know killed a, a ton of you and then put you in debt forever more so something there does those two things don't seem right you know that the same man would 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 do both those things um so whether he was got to whether he was influenced whether he was real at all whether i i, I don't know do you know what i mean so and and the the documents since are all slanted a certain way. Do you know I mean you'll have some people who will, will be completely on the war side, some people who are completely on the, the economy side. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever know what what happened. I mean, it seems to be there was a bigger a bigger group involved rather than just this one man who went off the rails a bit. Yeah, I just thought uh, I got myself into quite something talking about that topic. Uh... My girlfriend was beforehand uh, saying, like, Chris, please, not your <laughs> usual stuff. Don't talk about that uh, very crazy stuff. <laughs> and 23 minutes in, we're, we're talking about it. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just laughed and thought, like, okay, now it's there. <laughs> <laughs> By the way... I mean, it's an important thing, you know, it's, because it's obviously it's shaped your country and, and your life, you know, ever since. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. I I really don't have uh, an answer to which side he belongs or... Uh, I, mean, I mean, we have some sources. If I would have been better prepared for, for our talk, I could have, um, I could have uh, looked up all that stuff again. Mm -hmm. Like I did it, I don't know, years ago, mm -hmm. very intensely, because I was always very interested in history. Mm -hmm. And I found out quite, quite some stuff. There's quite some people in the whole movement that are very interesting. But right now, I, I don't have it present uh, to well, talk we'll about. We'll do another one maybe in, in the future, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of do a, a bit of a deep dive on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is interesting stuff because it's, it's obviously it seems to be it seems the same pattern as other things that they've done, where you've you've kind of you've cr a narrative has been created around this thing, and so yeah. Something bad happened. We came and, or, or, or we, like the the people in charge, like saved everybody from it, and so now we have to do this. And it it seems to be the same kind of pattern as as other events that have happened. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the, the Ukraine Russia situation right now is very very comparable to the German Polish situation uh, mm. uh, one hundred years ago. Well, yeah, I mean, you've already got the, the Putin's a bad man and, and, you know, everyone, you've already got the, the comparisons there. I mean, obviously people are, are go crazy with the comparisons, but, you know, the, the general, if you asked the, the, the average man on the street, is Putin good or bad, they would say bad without knowing anything about him yeah. um, or anything about the policy or anything. That, you, know, you know, that's just the thing, like they've already planted that in everyone's, in everyone's mind. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, I just saw that uh, Wunderbär is also in the chat right now. Mm -hmm. He was he was actually the the instigator to destroy the also Europa Bear group from Kuchulain and Basraka oh. Bear. <laughs> well, yeah, was, I'm talking about that. Just just so people know, there was um there was a, a European Bear group set up um on Telegram. Um, Buzzrecker and Cullen were, were 
like the main instigators, weren't they? They were the, the main ones who were kind of pushing it. Um, so obviously, once they kind of spazzed out and <laughs> went a bit weird, they, they tried to bring everything down with them. Um, but obviously, like you say, if, if you know, if other people jumped in and luckily saved certain certain parts of it. Yeah. I'm sorry for the abrupt change of topic. It's not no. like I did, I wanted to change the topic. I just saw uh, Wunderbear in the yeah. chat, and I wanted to shout the guy mm -hmm. out. No, you know, he just said he's, he's proud about it. Exactly. I mean, you should be. That's the. They, they caused a lot of a lot of problems when they left, um, especially with the Irish groups, um, because obviously I've, I've been over to Ireland a couple of times, met with a few bears over there, and you know that they, they had a they had a decent thing over there. And then yeah, you know, absolutely. money and buying land and, and all this kind of thing, and obviously they, they they've just exploded the whole thing from from within. Um, and I think they're still recovering really because I think there's now a lot of trust issues. There's now a lot of you know people don't want to go down that road again. Um, so it's 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 surprising what a mess like just a, a few kind of losers can make really. Yeah. I I'm actually, uh, I'm actually quite glad that the Irish Bear Group uh, took uh, a hit. Uh, to be honest, <clears throat> that's why the German Bear Group uh, potentially maybe became number one in Europe. <laughs> I mean, look, that's the thing. The, the, the Irish Bears were they, they were kind of leading the way, I suppose, um, as far as like outside of America, because um, I think they were like. They were kind of like first to it with all the kind of like you know the the, the meat and and publicizing it and stuff, um. But yeah, it it did it did kind of put a bomb underneath it. So yeah, you're number one now, are you Germany? I don't know. We have to confirm that. But there was a joke, obviously. Like I wish the Irish the best mm -hmm. and everything. I was so jealous when I saw the Irish uh, bear meetup pictures. How much children they had, mm -hmm. and then I was thinking like, what the fuck. And, and us, what about us? <clears throat> like, we have a long way to go to, but we actually really put in some structures and uh, have a nice community here. So, what's the what's the scene like over in Germany? Because obviously, you're you're a massive country, you know. So, how how do you organize kind of meets and stuff like that? Uh, I would say we are like 50, 60 active bears in Germany right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least of which I know of. I yeah. mean, there could be sleepers everywhere, sigmas, I don't know, people that don't really want to socialize and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But we have like nice bear meetups four or five times a year uh, right now. Uh, cool. um, and it's really yeah. nice a community where people know each other personally and friendships mm -hmm. and business relationships come from well that's what it's all about isn't it i mean it, it's a, it's at certain areas of germany that it tends to be more popular in or, or is there like a just a, a spread all over the place i have to say uh, proudly that in my area in west germany uh, there is a hot spot for uh right. Bataria, cologne Düsseldorf, um mm -hmm. other regions of uh, um, no no other parts of the regions <laughs> not other regions of the regions <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> why do you think that is do you tend to be more kind of old school there or or, or are you, you kind of like separate from everything that's going on in Berlin and, and all that uh, sorry I didn't understand the question uh, do you tend to be like in, so in your area does it tend to be more kind of like old school thinking um, you know are you more kind of like separated from the from the capital and you know separated from kind of the cities or is it I don't know is it is it a different kind of demographic where you are like why, why do you think it's more popular in your area than say the rest of Germany uh, I don't, don't even know if that's the case it's just that a lot of bears that are active are in West Germany and I think it was because people here maybe were more su successful to mm -hmm. like introduce Owen Benjamin to other trucers, which, mm -hmm. which which is a difficult uh, thing somehow. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's also a thing of what are you ready for to look into? What uh, 
I mean, about humor and everything. I started watching Owen, I don't know, five, six years ago. And um, some others did too that are active in the community. And some started watching him a year ago or two, mm -hmm. but in Corona at least. But it's so tough uh, to really, I don't know, do you think, do you think bears that are coming in right now have more problems or difficulties to join really the culture or do you think it doesn't matter i think there's um i think it could be more difficult because there's a lot of a lot of us know each other you know we have our own kind of like groups within the the bear group yeah. um yeah. so it might be more difficult for someone who's, who's fresh coming in because obviously we all have our in jokes we all kind of know each other on a level where we can mock each other and you know that kind of thing um whereas if you're if you're someone just coming in you know you you don't always know if people are serious you don't know what you can get away with and, and that kind of thing um but at the same time i think there's i think, I think bears as as a whole have kind of like learned how to spot bad eggs yeah. earlier um yeah. That's so if sweet. you are welcome in, then it's it's because you're good. It's because you're a nice person, probably. Yeah, but the whole spirit of the bear community, with everything, with mm -hmm. the mocking, with the um, you know what what's the bear community about? I'm probably not really, I can't really explain it in English that much, actually, even though it is English basically, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, just the spirit, the uplifting, mm -hmm. but uh, also spiritual uh, spirit. You know, it's it's tough to explain it to 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 newcomers or new people, yeah. I guess. It is because it's it's kind of unique in the in the sense that we we take we, we're all discussing very serious things, but we don't take ourselves very seriously. Um, yeah. So it's it's kind of like we're, we're not. It's almost like we're we're mocking the the worst events in history, um, you know. Which, but we're mocking it from a, a from a stance of of knowledge, if you like. Like, um, we're not mocking it just to be cruel or mocking it because of of whatever. We we we've kind of learned about you know what actually happened or or you know the reasons behind it, and so as a as a as a release, if you like, we're kind of like we we use mockery. Um, so if if people are kind of coming into that and they don't understand that they might just think that we're, we're kind of like not taking things seriously and, and all you, do, do you know what i mean there's um you could you can take a very serious topic and and be be not serious about it you don't always have to be very kind of solemn and or, or whatever when you're talking about certain things yeah um like i say I, I don't think bears particularly take themselves very seriously i think the ones that do soon get found out I mean, uh, do you know how hard it is to establish like a humor, not like Owen style, but in that direction in Germany, where people <laughs> take things very seriously? <laughs> is is that a cliche? Is it a stereotype that the the German sense of humor um, is, is kind of very, a very literal or very uh, very you know very. You, you don't really have one, basically. Is that, is that more of a stereotype, or is it actually kind of quite true? I think uh, Telecaster Bear just gave, gave you a compliment. Um, with 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 Joe Gagan, there is no such thing as a compliment. Everything he says, there, there will be an element of like almost almost hatred, but not really hatred. Just just kind of like bitterness, I think. <laughs> Um, because he's he's a horrible a horrible little man, um, <laughs> and so so I am now if if Joe if Joe compliments you then worry basically that there's he, he wants something from you. Yeah, I think I should have this wonder bear too instead of propping him up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wrote a letter to Owen in which I said I mean, in which I t uh, put pressure on. Wunder Bear and False Bear, that's another bear from Dusseldorf. Mm -hmm. He's half Korean, uh, but he looks co completely Korean actually. Right. But he's like one, one, 80, one meter 88. I don't know. Do you have meter in England or do you use foot? Uh, and it depends what we're measuring. In England's very weird. We, we use metric and imperial um, and, and just easily interchange them. 
Um, so it depends what we're measuring as to whether we measure it in meters or feet and inches. The same with inches and centimeters and ounces and liters and <laughs> we, we just kind of like interchange things. So we, we know what we mean, but nobody else knows what we're talking about. Okay, so Falk Bear and Wonder Bear really fucked up, didn't write a letter to Owen and should be a shame. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that. Well, you've been called out now, so it's it's over to you. Um, you've got to you got to step up. Yeah, so I don't know if that works. I mean, I called them out in the letter to Owen already, but and they still nothing haven't. Happens. Nothing happens. I mean, they sound sound pretty gay, so I'd I'd worry a bit, but yeah, I mean, ho hopefully they can redeem themselves and pay it away. But yeah, I would, I'd I would, I'd keep an eye on them at bear meets. Yeah. I don't know. They don't seem gay, but Wunder Bear is kind of an artist, and Falk Bear doesn't even have a girlfriend, so I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> the the signs are there, man. <laughs> there's, there's very obvious signs. Um, but yeah, hopefully they're not for, for, for their say and for yours, obviously, but yeah, they, they, they need to prove themselves, I think. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah. How did you get into like when did you how did you find Owen like was it through the the kind of the comedy or more of like the the truth of stuff? No, it was more the truth of stuff. At the time, I was like a QAnon loser. Right. Uh, I was watching all the I don't know even the channel's names like twenty X twenty one report or something, all uh -huh. that kind of stuff or we the people. I don't know, uh, Praying Medic or all these channels that were like totally into that PSYOP and I really liked Trump and stuff. Right. At the time. And then Owen popped up in the YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, in the YouTube suggestions and he was analyzing some movie or something. Owen didn't even have a beard, I think. He was wearing <laughs> glasses. Oh, in, in his uh, lesbian days. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> and um, and I was, I was like, oh, interesting guy. He's pretty intense. I don't know if he's angry, but uh, interesting anal analysis of the movie. Mm -hmm. And then I kept up with him and, uh, yeah, went to Telegram and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. So are you okay understanding everything he says? Because obviously he talks you know, very quickly and, and, you know, there's a lot of, there'll be a lot of words that are kind of like uniquely American or, or, or Americanisms, um, but you're okay, like, following the streams and stuff. Since he doesn't have, have an English accent, he's pretty easy to understand. I, found, I actually, I found that because obviously with TV and movies and stuff, the, everyone's kind of used to the American accent. Yeah, um, that's true. That's yeah, true. so the... The English accent is, is very, and, and plus it, there's like six million different English accents, so it's, uh, even, I, I don't understand half of English people. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah the, the, some of the accents in England are crazy, like, the, 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 I can't understand what they're saying. Um, even, I mean, 20 miles from here, I can't understand what, what some people are saying, if they've got the, if they're really kind of old school and got the thick accents, I can't, I can't understand a word they're saying. Oh, really? That's that's, uh, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, I really like it if they have their regional dialect and their local dialect. It's like a cultural thing, mm -hmm. I believe. In Germany, we have it too. And mm -hmm. I guess it also forms the personality, your dialect. Mm. It's a cool thing, I think. Well, especially, um, it seems to be like where, where I am up in the north. It, it's it's almost like a, like a badge of honor, so you have to... Um, like your accent is, is, is representing your town or your city or whatever. So people, a lot of people will, will, will where some, some people try and speak correctly, if you like, and, and try not to use an accent or not to use certain words. Others will really play up on it and really, you know, almost like to prove that they're very proud of where they come from. Um, so, yeah, when, you, when you're talking to those, like, like I say, I can't understand the, a word that they... What they say, I mean, the Scouse Bear is in here. Um, so Scouse Bear is from Liverpool. Um, I his think accent. Bear is in the chat. Yeah. 
Um, well, I mean, his accent, I get why Americans can't understand a lot of what he says. Um, whereas I, my dad was from Liverpool, so I, I can understand like um, perfectly. But there's a, um, there's a few towns like on the outskirts of Liverpool. So there's a place called St. Helens. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's not in Liverpool, but a lot of people pretend that they're from Liverpool if they live in St. Helens. So they put on an accent that's even more Scouse than Scouse's accent. So they put on this really thick, fake Liverpool accent, and you, you, I, I can't, I, I, I struggle to understand what they're saying because they're, they're getting the accent wrong in some places, but also it's they, they put it on so thick and so, and, and really kind of like try and put the accent on that it, like I say, you can't, you can't understand them. That's really fascinating because in Germany we have the opposite phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Like here, people are ashamed of their accents mm. and dialect because they believe if they sound primitive or old-fashioned uh, yeah. with it, so they try to lose it, and that's really a shame, actually. Mm. No, it is, it is a shame because it. I I get the the argument like it is part of your identity. It is part of where you you know it's your roots. Um, you know, and and so if it's it's almost kind of like a, a little insulting, I suppose, if you if your parents speak a certain way. And you don't want, want to sound like them. But do, you, do you know what I mean? Like I get that you kind of, you know, some jobs require you to speak more coherently and more clearly. But yeah. just in normal life, how you kind of like you're. It's almost like you're pretending to be better than you are. Um, yeah, it's, it's a shame that you kind of that, that the scousers kind of like lose the lose their accent. Or not scouts, anyone really. But you know, people people from Liverpool will will. Try but some some like scouts don't care and they'll just talk like in, in the native tongue. Whereas a lot of them will try and hide it a little bit, um, and to to try almost like as a career thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, because of certain certain stereotypes around certain cities, so you don't you don't want to sound like you're from that city, really. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So you're in. Uh, are you in Cologne? I'm sorry. Are you in Cologne, or are you Dusseldorf, or are you around that? Yeah, that, that would be a bad insult uh, if I were, if I'm uh, uh, like I'm from Dusseldorf, and we have a big right. rivalry with Cologne. Right. It's okay. like Liverpool and Manchester. Oh, you know? well, I, 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 if it's like Liverpool and Manchester, then I am forever apologizing to you <laughs> because <laughs> I wouldn't want to you for, for the other one. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's just like a, a lovely rivalry or lo- like a playful rivalry, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's fun. We, we always mock what, each other. What's Dusseldorf like these days? Because in the in the eighties, I don't know if you're aware, there was um there used to be a TV show on in England called Alfida Same Pet, um, and it never was heard. never heard, it, it was. Basically, the, the 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 show was about a load of um, builders and contractors from England who went over to Dusseldorf because they were, we were basically like rebuilding Germany at the time. Um, in the eighties, and, and so it was it was set in Dusseldorf, and it was it was about these like English contractors all going over and living in all the huts and, and basically going over there as, as laborers to to mm-hmm. build uh, build the city. So I mean, is it what's it like? Nowadays, is it is it kind of like a, a, is it a modern city or is it? A... Yeah, I mean, they have some ugly, very modern buildings which are worldwide now, like all glass and mm. no soul or not much. I mean, some people like that the kind of architecture that's cool, but I don't really like it. But we still have some old buildings. We have like a very nice little old town. Mm. Uh, with, like very old buildings, old pubs, but unfortunately, like the Irish pub thing is like a virus, you know. We have three Irish pubs in Düsseldorf, actually, <laughs> or, or even five. I don't know where they came from. <laughs> Maybe they were set up during that time because obviously the Irish claim to have built everything. Um, uh, so maybe there was a lot of Irish kind of builders and laborers who were over there and. You know, that's where they, they've come from. I don't know. Yeah, I think the Irish were rebuilding Germany and we owe them a lot. I mean, the, the Irish claim to build... All the Irish build is pubs. Um, and they, 
the English home and build the actual buildings and houses and, and all that. And the, the Irish build the pubs. Um, so yeah, they, they claim to build everything, but they, they really... If, they, if the Irish had built it, it would have fallen down by now. So. <laughs> no, I think they just put the brand in here. Like, we have all the same stuff, KFC, McDonald's, Burger mm -hmm. King, everything, yeah. you know. Well, that's the thing now. I mean, obviously, I've, I've traveled around Europe a little bit, and... It, it does seem to be like it's the, the buildings are, are kind of old and and you know beautiful, but then it, the, the shops in them and the stores in them, it, like you said, it's just KFC, it's McDonald's, it's you know the, the same chains that are that are everywhere. It's the same shops that are in England, Zara, and you know all these kind of shops that are that are just in England. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the the identity of each country just seems to be kind of slowly corroding a little bit, certainly in the cities anyway. Um, let me just get through some of these questions because they're backing up. Um, right. Scouse Bear wants to know, uh, do you own any David Hasselhoff albums? <laughs> I might be too young for that. Because <laughs> he was a big thing over in Germany, wasn't he? I guess I don't know to be honest. I mean, I for sure I heard of David Hasselhoff and the song that he sang at the wall and everything, but it was before my time. I was born uh, three days before the wall fall, so. Uh, oh, okay. I yeah. yeah, I think um, probably like mid '90s, something like that. Like, because um, David Hasselhoff had, had obviously he'd done Night Rider and he'd done Baywatch. And then all of a sudden he started being a singer. Um, and it, yeah. yeah, the story was that he was just huge in Germany at the time, like for, for no reason. It was just like everybody loved David Hasselhoff. It should be around 89, 90. Mm. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, it was to do with the, the wall. Um, Scouse also wants to know, do you have a football club? I'm not that much into football anymore, but my first club is Fortuna Düsseldorf, uh -huh. German cha champion in 33, 1933, German champion. <laughs> we know what year that is. Is that <laughs> um, the, um, Maybe you don't know, I don't know. Uh, well, is that the only time you won it? Oh, sorry? Is that the only time that they ever won it as well? 1933. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're waiting 100 years. But um, my second club, which is close to my heart, is Borussia Dortmund. You probably know that one. Yeah, I mean, That's I know, I know. I know. Um, but obviously Dortmund is, is at the moment, is, is probably like the second biggest club in Germany behind behind Munich. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know like the Cousin are, are doing well this year, but it's Dortmund seems to be the their main rival, isn't it? It's the yeah. yeah. This year it's Bayer Leverkusen, mm -hmm. which is also very close to Düsseldorf, like twenty minutes by car. Right. Uh, but they are still unbeaten actually in the whole season, and they are miles ahead of Bayern Munich. Uh, but uh, Dor Dortmund actually gave you your manager, mm -hmm. you know, your uh, Jurgen Klopp, who is a cool dude. Well, hopefully uh, Leverkusen gives us our next manager because obviously Klopp's leaving in at the end of the year, so we're hoping that Xabi Alonso comes to comes back to Liverpool. Um, yeah, I mean, well, he might he might go to Bayern Munich. I don't know, but like, yeah, Leverkusen are the only club in Europe who's still unbeaten. Um, so he's he's it's a ridiculous kind of record that he's got at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't follow football that much mm -hmm. anymore. I'm just checking results, yeah. not watching games uh, on TV or in the stadium anymore. But so, how yeah, come you stopped? How come you stopped following football? I thought it's like a thing. You know, I I was also doing sports a lot when I was young, and I was I wanted to become a professional fencer actually. All right, cool. Like, the fencing sport and but and I was so much into sport and I was like getting angry when my team lost and I was so excited and everything and then with my spiritual development I thought like why am I giving so much energy energy to all that so much attention into it mm -hmm. 
uh, what is it even worth? Is it even rigged? They were all like getting the you know what shot, and they were like advertising this stuff, and I really thought it's like an old Rome, like bread and games, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I mean the the standard as well has has dropped considerably. I mean, I I battle with it every year whenever because I I have a season ticket, and so whenever my, my season ticket renewal will come through in about a month's time uh, to to buy the ticket for next year, um, and every year I think I'm not doing it again. I'm not spending <laughs> the, the amount of money, and then it gets to like it gets closer to the renewal date because they they give you like three weeks or whatever to to like start to you know. Uh, buy your season ticket again um yeah and then you get the fever again yeah well it, it's the it's the kind of like the fear of missing out it's like you know i want to be there for this game or, or whatever and then but yeah i mean I, I most of the time I, I i genuinely kind of like when it when it comes to the weekend i'm now happy if, if we're playing away because I, I don't go to the away games anymore i used to go home and away i used to go all up and down the country yeah. um but I, I stopped doing the away games when I got with my, my, my wife because obviously finances and time. Um, it was and, probably a huge step for you, stopping the away yeah. games. <laughs> well, it was. Because the away games were, were, were almost more fun than the home games because you'd obviously be on the, on the coach with the other fans going to the away games. So it would be like a whole day thing. You know, you'd leave, especially if you were playing like the, the London clubs and stuff like that, you'd leave at like six o'clock in the morning. And then I know what it was. You were just happy that you could drink without people knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy I, was, I could drink without having to drive home because I drive to the, the home game, so I can't have a drink. Um, but yeah, on the, on the coaches, it was great because you, you'd be with all the fans, you'd be drinking, you'd be singing all the way down there. You'd have like the some of the like maybe the away fan coach goes past you, and you, you know, you've got a bit of banter with them. Yeah. yeah. Um, the away games were actually kind of quite tricky to give up. Well, obviously, the, the finances around them, it was crazy because obviously you got the price of the ticket, your transport, you know, your, your days kind of food and drink. And it was just, it was crazy money. Um, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Germany, it's still cheaper. Well, yeah, the, it, there, was a, there was a craze a few years ago of um, a lot of English fans, especially in the South, because they, they could get on the, the through the Channel Tunnel. Um, and it was cheaper for those, like people in London and stuff, it was cheaper for those to go and watch a German game. So to go over to Germany for the weekend, watch a German what game and then go home. That's, it was what to watch. Do, that's what you should do if Liverpool plays. I, I think Borussia Dortmund won't make it, but if Liverpool plays against Dortmund in the Champions League, you should come over mm. and then we do a meet-up. Yeah, that would be great. It'll be, yeah, Skousen, Skousen may should come over. Um, well, yeah. that's, that, that's ideal, really. If if we could do that in European game, same same if you know you come over to you know it's just an excuse to come over, isn't it? You know, and then say you have a means. Even if you don't go to the game, you can watch it in a pub or, or whatever. You know, it's it's, it's yeah, it's just a good excuse to to do it. I mean, is obviously your mainland Europe and, and England is or, or the UK is a, is an island, so we kind of tend to think of of Europe as being like miles away, like it's it's over there. So it's the thought of going to to France or something is like a, it's a big deal because you've 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 either got to get on a plane or you've got to go through the Channel Tunnel or a ferry or something, whereas you could just drive over. So do do you go to a lot, lot of the the other European countries? You know, just because they they're they're easily accessible. You are hiding behind the geographical thing. It's a <laughs> mentality thing. It takes us an extra hour <laughs> to get there, so we can't possibly do it. <laughs> but yeah, do, do you you know do do you sort of drive around Europe and stuff, or, or do you just kind of like stay around where 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 you are? You mean for traveling and stuff? Yeah, I'm going on some travels with my girlfriend. We're visiting cities, especially in East Germany, because I haven't been there at Dresden, Leipzig, uh, but also flying actually we want to fly to the u.s for the first time in our lives uh oh. maybe to the missouri bear meetup oh. this year all right oh that'd be cool we want to fly last year too but uh, the whole permission uh to get into the country took 
so long that the tickets were getting up in prices. So we right. thought, then let's do just a week in Spain and save the money. Mm -hmm. No, that would be, be great to, to go over to America. And you've, you've never been before. Have you been to the US? Yeah, well, I've, I've been low, low <laughs> more than I can think. I, I got married in America. Uh, we used to go over like, like every two years, eight months and like that and then it's it stopped with covid um oh, yeah. mm -hmm. we had everything booked we had everything paid for for the, for three weeks in america um in june of 2020 mm -hmm. um and obviously the, the lockdown and stuff happened in march um so we had to we, we kept rearranging it so we kept putting the tickets back like a couple of months yeah. and then it, it turned out that we couldn't it, it was it was never going to happen because obviously then they brought in like the 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 jab requirement Requirements and stuff to get into America, so we we, we just cancelled it and haven't been back since. Yeah. Um, Understandably so. I mean, it was a good thing in a way because we we kind of got into the the trap because it is a you, you'll know if you if you're thinking of, of going over there, it, it is an expensive trip. Um, yeah. So obviously, for the price of that, I can have like two holidays in Rodos or, or wherever. Um, so you know, it's it's a it's we kind of got out. Out of, we were forced to get out of that, which was kind of a good thing financially, because um, we were just kind of like working to go to America each year and, and not having anything left. Uh, so, you, so, now it's, uh, so you really loved America, or you really do, actually, probably? Yeah, I mean, well, we always we always tended to go to like the West Coast, um, and yeah, I mean, loved it, loved it over there, because um, it's it's just everything that that England should be. Plus the weather, plus the the, the the environments, plus you know, the, there's just nothing. I get why people don't want to live in California. Um, certainly, like around LA and stuff, I understand that. But for me, just going over there, doing what I want, and and being on vacation, it was it's perfect. But yeah, I we think a lot of English people. Are... Germans and English are actually kind of trying to take over Mallorca, I think. <laughs> the English have, have the English have been trying to take it over for it. I think we're, the English have taken Benidorm, I think. I think that's um that's now a little England. Um but yeah, the, because it's it, as much as anything else it's just the it's the climate and the cost of uh, the, the the cost of living there because obviously when you retire in England you then get your pension and you get everything else and so by that time certainly like the last generation so like the, the boomers and stuff like they they were um they'd had the houses paid off you know so they didn't have a mortgage they didn't have anything any you know the, the children had grown up so they thought okay well, we'll just move to benedorm and, uh, and you know we can buy something for half the cost of our house that we have now and then live off yeah. and that's it we, we you know we just retire in the sun um so yeah i don't i don't blame i, I wouldn't like it if i was spanish but i, I get like i get why people go over there yeah, absolutely. Um, pretty cool weather. Uh -huh. um, what do you think? Uh, <clears throat> I actually thought about some questions, but right now I don't have them in my mind anymore. But what do you think about, about the develop? Ah, yeah, that's an important thing, you know. Actually, in Germany, a lot of the truthers develop a fear, and I think. It's a psyop about war with Russia. I'm not right. sure, but a lot of the truthers here are getting very scared that Russia is invading Germany in the mm. year, maybe even this year, maybe next year. And for right. sure, there are some things brewing there in the Ukraine and everything. But I just want to know from you if that's also the case in other countries with people. No, I mean it's certainly not as far as like invading England or anything like that. that I've never heard anyone particularly mention that. Um, I mean, there's always the narrative that Russia wants to to flex their muscles a bit and you know take over land that's surrounding them. Um, and obviously, like half of Europe is surrounding Russia. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? At some point, it'll touch like somewhere around Russia or or where Russia used to own. Um, Germany doesn't have borders with Russia. Mm. Well, you have the 
you can't. I, I don't know. I mean, where the, when the Berlin Wall was there, obviously the the Eastern Bloc was kind of like you know it was it was like little Russia, really, wasn't it? Um, so yeah. do, you, do you think they just gave that up freely and and said okay, yeah, you can have have that back, or, or do you think some deal was made where the Russians still kind of like held an interest in that area, whether you know just financially or something? I think to form the one world government they had to end the cold war mm -hmm. and the two uh, and the two contraries the two mm -hmm. uh, opposites and i don't know what's going on right now but uh, i think it's more or less a show and people are propping up putin mm -hmm. like they were propping up trump before mm -hmm. you know thinking putin is like the great guy and everything but uh, what the fuck? Yeah. But no, the, the, as far as like invading, we, we did have it when I was growing up in the, in the, in the eighties. Um, it was during the cold, like the, the, the sort of the back end of the cold war. Um, and there was always the, the, the threat of, of nuclear weapons from Russia coming to England. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the argument was that if, if America and Russia kicked off, Obviously, England would be on America's side, and Russia can get to us quicker than they can get to America. So we used to have um, the, the, they used to have these things on the TV and stuff, and it was called the four-minute warning. Um, so basically, what it was was if this, like, so if you were watching television, the the um, what they what they planned to do was they would interrupt all TV stations, all radio stations with this warning. Um, it's on YouTube; you can actually find the warning, um, and it was basically a four-minute warning which meant that Russia had set off nuclear weapons and it would take them four minutes to get to England <laughs> um, so it was basically like this is the warning say bye-bye to your family um, yeah, yeah. and all this you weren't you, I think they told you not to use the phone because obviously everyone was going to phone like the parents and say like bye-bye and all this so they told you not to use the phone um, and we, we had an escape plan in our house like when I was when I was growing up like this was uh, so it, this was our plan in case it was nuclear war, right? Um, so in our in the, like the dining room area of the house, there was a, a bit where you could get underneath the floor. So if the four minute warning went off, the plan was we all had to grab as much tinned food as we could and get under the floor. Yeah, and that was it. That, that was our <laughs> that was our entire plan for nuclear war. So we were yeah. just going to go on with like some tinned fruit and sit there better, for a hundred years. Better. Always be scared. It can happen every minute. Life is over. Mm -hmm. Just some bullshit. Just yeah. psyop. I mean, like Owen talks about it when they when when they used to do it at his school, where they used to do the duck and cover, where they used to practice hiding under the desks in case there was a nuclear attack and all this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, the the four minute warning thing was like it, it used to it used to scare me a bit as a kid because obviously if you're told that it any point they can just say right you've got four minutes to live That's yeah absolutely a scary, scary prospect to a kid i'm pretty happy that i was born like 10 20 years later mm -hmm. but i think every i mean are you generation x um i don't it's a controversial one because i was born in 1981 um 18 and so the older than me we, we, there's like a crossover that they think between like I think it's like 79 and 85 or something. So if you're born within this period, and the the way they frame it is they say like you you grew up in an analog world, but you were kind of young enough to adapt to a digital world. Um, so that's the, like so. But anyone after born after like 85, 86, like all they've kind of known is like a digital world. Um, I would so yeah. say that. Well, that, but it's um, like, that's the way they that's the way they they, they frame it as it a. Pretty early, think, yes, it was pretty early. I think they call them zennials or something. So it's like a cross between a millennial and a gen gen X. Or, I, I don't know. Um, maybe you got the best of both worlds. Maybe, maybe, or, or the. I think part of it is kind of because there's a lot of a lot of bears around, kind of my age, um, and I think a lot of it is. Because we'd had the, the like that 
that little bit of old world before like the new world came on with all the, you know the the internet and computers and everything being you know digital we were kind of like, like old enough to be <laughs> to to see through it a little bit um whereas anyone after that it's it's like well you know this is the truth kind of thing um i don't know i don't, I don't know when when the, the best the best year or best era to be born was um, I don't. I don't think it really matters. You're you're either got common sense or you haven't. Uh, common sense. <laughs> yeah, just like you know, like obviously, you know, the the ability to to think for yourself. You know that that well, kind of thing. It's you've either, you've yeah. either got that or you haven't. Um, yeah, well. Toronto says uh, you were conceived at a David Hasselhoff concert. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I mean, time-wise, it's close. <laughs> I mean, it could be true. <laughs> um, Scouse's 1973 was the best ever I heard. Scouse, you're just old as fuck, so shut up. It surprises me how old Scouse is, because like, whenever I... I always think he's, like, younger than me, um, because he's about three Rogans tall. Um, and, yeah. He's, he's just yeah. I just, I just always think he's younger than me, and then all of a sudden, like he's whatever eight years older than me. Um, maybe he just uh, maybe he just conservated his body like Queen Mum did with alcohol. May, I, it wouldn't surprise. Me. <laughs> I've seen him drink, so it wouldn't surprise me if that was happened. Um, I think it, I think he's just that old. He's, he started to wrinkle up and shrivel up into a, a little a little ball with a curly wig on. <laughs> um, right, Quiet Bear says, I have a book. Does anyone want to buy it? It's called James Poole and Suzanne Poole Who Finance Hitler. Um, so if you want to wanna buy that book, then get in touch with Quiet Bear. Um, Sleepy House says, What's for dinner? Um, question to me? Yeah. I have love like some meat pieces laying around and if I hold something in the camera which you unfortunately can't see people will I think uh, laugh a lot because it's so uh, cliche <laughs> I got so what is it? sausages actually you got what sorry? sausages All right. I'm on the carnivore diet. Oh, okay. How's that working? It's working great for me. Mm. Uh, I did it. I do it since a year or at least uh, some less than a year. I lost right. like 10 kilos and I feel like uh, um, I feel like I'm 25 again or something. Cool. So Going what is it? Is it exclusively meat, or is it just to to get as much meat in and as a day, or how does it work? Uh, no, I'm I am also eating uh, <clears throat> I'm also eating eggs, cheese, fish, um, a lot of stuff, and also this one. Uh, you probably can't see it, but I think it's cream. Right, it's cream in English. Uh, like very fatty things, but no sugar. A lot of animal, just only animal protein. I mean, I have a cheat day once a week, but other than that, I only eat animal protein. So, is it no fruits and veg at all? Yes. Cool. I mean, fruits are okay, but I sometime in the future I will introduce them back. And I still like everything. I was an omnivore before. I never had any diets or anything. But through the truth and journey, I came to the carnivore diet, and that was the first time in my life where I really thought, okay, let's let's see if that kind of stuff works to get Isn't to the next level. No, if you if you're buying a lot of meats and stuff, is it is it costing you more money? I think I'm pretty much on par with the old spending because I don't use sauces anymore. I don't have a lot of um, herbs uh -huh. or I don't know how it's called um, 
like eggs are not that expensive, especially if you go to a farmer or mm -hmm. raw milk. Um, yeah, for sure, a steak is expensive. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to, if somewhere is like an offer, <laughs> like reduce prices, yeah, I'm going there. Price. <laughs> with like a big cool bag I get like 50 mm. steaks and then I'm leaving the place <laughs> or 100 steaks no not 100 mm. steaks I can't even ignore that but I get so much then and then freeze it yeah I'm, I'm the same I go into um my wife doesn't drive so I, I, I have to drive her into work and, and back every day and in between her work and our house is a there's a little supermarket um mm -hmm. And so I, I go in there because the first thing in the morning they've got everything 60%, all of the, the meat that's going out of date and stuff is 60% off um, Yeah. from like the night before, so whatever they didn't sell. Um, so I'm, I'm the same. I, I go in every morning, just check it, and then you know buy stuff, stick it in the freezer. Oh, uh, hey, hang, uh, stuntman, I'm sorry, my phone is dying actually right now. Okay. It's just at 1% energy. I really have to... Uh... One moment. Okay, no worries. Um, just to uh, complete the cliche with uh, with the German eating sausages, I have you been. Be now. Yeah, I can still hear you. Yeah, what about the German sausages? I'm just saying that the cliche of Germans with eating sausages, the the cliche of English is that we we eat beans on toast. Um, and yeah. that, I had that for tea tonight because I was I was trying to get sorted quickly, so I I thought I'll make something quick and have beans on toast. And yeah. yesterday I had fish and chips. Um, so yeah, we're 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 thoroughly like cementing those stereotypes. Yeah, I mean, why not? Why stop it if it's good? Yeah. If if you <laughs> like it. I also had English breakfast uh, when I was in Marlboro. Actually, I was in a summer school. Mm -hmm. In England, uh, Marlboro, uh, you probably know where it is, close to London, or oh. I don't know actually. And we, we always had English breakfast, and I really liked it because I never had this bacon stuff before in my life. All right, okay. It's, it's really an English thing, I guess. Well, the the um, I think it's Denmark, isn't it? That that we, we always seem to get Danish bacon. Um, so I don't know if, if Denmark kind of like were the first people to do it because. Um, in America, they do bake them slightly differently. It's really kind of like crispy and stuff in America, whereas in in England, it's 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 not. Um, but yeah, the the English breakfast. There's yeah, obviously it's bacon, egg, tomato, sausage, hash brown, all that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Scouse is is moaning that I'm a fussy eater, but yeah, never never go out for. If I do come over to Germany and, and we meet up, don't take me out for a meal because mm -hmm. I won't eat anything. <laughs> I, I eat like a child, <laughs> so don't don't. Um, <clears throat> what do you mean, like a child? Just just very kind of like basic food. Um, I'm very, I'm just very very picky. I always have been. Um, I've I'm try I've tried to like broaden my things, but like like eggs, I don't like eggs. I don't like cheese. I don't like like sausages have to be cooked a certain way, and you know all this kind. Of, I'm just like a like a baby with it. Um, I don't, I don't yeah, but, like anything like um, like fat and stuff. So I like everything almost like burned. So I can't taste any of the the fat and stuff on it. But. You know, all that pickiness of yours won't even fall into anyone's eye when I'm just taking meat without any dishes. <laughs> you know, yeah, you can hide my uh, hide my pickiness. No, most meat I'll, I'll I'll eat I'll happily eat all day long. That's why I, I've looked into the carnivore diet, but it's um I, I was just always worried about the kind of the cost of it um yeah but yeah like you say you know you can get it and you can freeze stuff and, and you know you can stock up on it when it's when it's on offer and stuff um what how does yeah. it go as far as like you know like alcohol and stuff like that is that is that kind of like a complete no-no or just can you still have a drink and stuff i mean it's like with the spiritual journey you know things are not good mm -hmm. but you it's not like somebody forbids it to mm -hmm. you in, in the carnivore diet, you know. You can still drink, you can still also eat wheat or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, it's just a habit. If you, if you do it or not, the, the results will be much better, like mentally, physically, if, you, if you're, like, 
disciplined and strict with mm -hmm. it. And that's why I do it because the advantages I got from it that I felt um, both um, cognitively and physically were so nice mm -hmm. that, I, that I really have no problem really. Um, I mean, I still have problems with cigarettes, for example. Right. Um, but not with like the diet. What's the um? Is there any downsides to it though? I mean, obviously, you know, if, you, if you're putting a lot of, of meat into your stomach and stuff all the time, you know, is, is there any kind of like you get stomach aches or, or any, you know, I don't want to be crude, but you know, any, any other kind of like issues that come with it or? Uh, uh, the cardiac issues are alive from the WHO that they mm -hmm. invented in the 60s or 70s. Right. With like studies, that that's all theories. Mm -hmm. The cardiac issues, the strokes, and whatever okay. should come from it. And the stomach is even better uh, if you try it out for two, three days. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can even see a difference if you have one meal just animal protein. Mm -hmm. For example, I have for breakfast oftentimes five eggs, uh, goat cheese. And mm -hmm. and some fish, and I mix it all together together and salt it, for example. Right. Uh, and if you have no bread, no carbohydrates, you will feel a difference in the stomach mm -hmm. just from one meal. Mm -hmm. And then you compare it to other meals with like noodles and rice and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a difference, and uh, the stomach feels much much better. Everything. We should, we, I'm not going to talk about the dirty stuff, but <laughs> everything that leaves the body mm -hmm. or uh, is processed feels much better. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a reason that we, you know, the, the body is meant to consume certain things, and, and obviously, meat is something that we were we were made to eat. Um, you know, it, it's 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 a natural product it's something that we can digest quite easily where you know our teeth are made to chew through it you know it's, it's an obvious yeah. thing we weren't made to be vegans i don't think we weren't made to just eat vegetables and stuff um yeah. so you know it, it has to be it has to be good for you doesn't it it has to be kind of you know you're, you're giving the, your body the fuel that it it was made to use i think so and I, I, it's not like a religion or something. If there are people that are thinking vegetarianism is the best or eating everything, like I have totally no problem with it. It's just that a lot, a lot of people are so brainwashed, uh, especially in Germany and especially in the truther world, you know. We have we built like a big community in Dusseldorf with like 80, 85 young Young adults like from 20 to 40 I would say uh -huh. and over half of them are vegetarians uh -huh. I would say because spiritually in the truth uh, community it's like still seen as a very big thing to be, be a vegan or a vegetarian like a moral thing uh -huh. and that's that's a dangerous path I think uh -huh. I mean yeah I get it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because from a moral point of view, I, I get the whole you're killing one living thing so that you can just eat it. Um, so I, I, I do kind of get the moral argument, but at the same time, yeah, I especially... Get too. I get it too. I mean, with, with, with farming, those those animals would never exist without without the need... You know, if, if we said tomorrow, right, nobody's allowed to eat meat, the farms then have no interest in keeping those animals so say they release them into the wild or whatever they they all yeah. just die by horrible deaths <laughs> within like a month you know whether that's starvation getting eaten by other predators getting hit by cars mm. whatever they would, they would all have a lot worse life if the farmers just released them um yeah. so the only reason that half of these animals exist at all is through farming and through eating them um or using using dairy products or whatever yeah that's also a good argument but there's even more even better arguments from the moral and ethical side mm -hmm. why it's better to eat uh, animals than plants but right, that would be a whole another topic I think for another stream or something and uh, I, I don't think I have the cognitive ability even though being on carnivore <laughs> to, to lay it out right now 
But yeah, I mean, every, everyone everyone has their own thing, don't they? And and it, I think this is the the trap that we, we all fall into, where we think, right, well, our thing is the right thing. Um, yeah. You know, our path is the right path. And anyone who doesn't, then we try and pick holes in it. We try and find fault with, with what they're doing rather than just accepting what they're doing. You yeah. know, someone wants to be a vegan, be a vegan it's fine. You know, I, I, I don't care. But at the same time, I can think of 50, arguments not to be a vegan and and yeah, do, you know, do you know what I mean I think we all fall into that trap rather than just kind of like this is what I want to do if you yeah. want to do that I'm fine you know so long as you're not harming anyone and stuff you know if, if you're doing something illegal or doing something that's harming people then obviously you should be called out on it um but just just what you think should never be something that someone automatically the second that they hear it wants to put down yeah absolutely I totally agree um just got another question through give us one second um toronto jew says does germany have any good comedians uh, uh, i heard of one which is actually even from my hometown but i haven't seen anything of him because i just saw an interview in which he stated that he took ayahuasca 20 times right. to get on the on the spiritual way and i thought like uh i don't know i've seen a lot of these guys taking a lot of drugs to try to mm -hmm. become enlightened and everything yeah. but i haven't given him a chance a lot of people are saying this guy nikolai binner mm -hmm. is a good comedian but other than that haven't seen any actually very sadly unfortunately is there um is there a comedy scene over there i mean as in kind of like you know the comedy shows and open mic nights and and that kind of thing is is that is that do you have comedy clubs and stuff there yeah, that's happening that's happening maybe i should uh i thought about going there too but i don't know uh the most of them are mainstream comedians perverted comedians like uh how how's the word called um when you feel like ashamed but not for yourself you know yeah. like cringe cringe yeah. isn't it yeah yes yeah, like uh, you know. uh henning is, is, is funny uh, yeah what's his name scouts what's his what's his proper name because he, he is he there's um there is a comedian who's on some of the shows over here and and he is funny he's, he's got he's very like he's, he's got really good timing um but yeah look, try and find out his, his actual uh Hen henning henning ben or henning one henning henning what i don't know any henning comedian i'm sorry yeah um i mean I I don't even know if he he might be based over here because he's on a lot of the English things, but he's very he's got a very thick German accent and stuff, and he's very kind of like German with his his delivery and stuff. Um, Sounds cool. Um, what, what's the what's the deal with Germans getting naked or having <laughs> <laughs> having no issue with being naked? I think uh, um, I don't know. In public and in in, in swimming mm -hmm. area, I think Germans have issues with it. Like the ones that are swimming naked are seen as kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But for example, in sports, uh, when you are in a sports team, it's no mm -hmm. problem that everybody gets naked and showers and dresses again, mm -hmm. like in the same room. Like that's not an issue. Uh, it's always um, when you're on holiday. You always you can always tell when there's there's Germans around. They they always have. If they are, if the men are dressed at all, they will have the tiniest speedos on. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> but but I've, I've I've seen I've seen far too many naked German people. I think um, probably oh. old people were like mm -hmm. the speedos and these these very uh, tight uh, uh, mm -hmm. shorts. They're all um, they all seem very shaved as well. You you rarely see a, a hairy German. So I don't, I don't again I don't know if that's like a boomer thing or whatever. But there's there's just like a, there's like a body shape and a type um, of the, 
this like clean shaven like little speedo wearing like german man that I, that's a that's at every hotel in europe at any one time yeah body shaving is not really a boomer thing it's more like a metrosexual right generation x generation z thing mm -hmm. i think uh, uh but shaving a beard is a boomer mm -hmm. thing for sure yeah. in Germany very very much yeah it's it's, it's an odd thing because it does seem to be um I don't know if it is but it does seem to be uniquely German on how easily you'll find a, a reason to be naked um, <laughs> but, um wonder whether yeah. I'm into German naked bodies I'm not into them I just can't avoid them um it's just wherever wherever I go whatever I hope Whatever hotel I go to in Europe, if it's got a pool, there will be a naked German. Really? Is that really a thing? I I, I didn't really thought about it as like a real thing that we yeah, have. Yeah, no, uh, honestly, like I've, I've been to, I mean, from from kind of like Tenerife to to Rhodes to all over all across Europe. Um, yeah, there's there's all you can tell the German straight away. Um, because the, the, like I say, at best. They'll be wearing little tiny speedos, um, <laughs> but yeah, that that's like best case scenario. Uh, I was, uh, as I said, in Mallorca with my girlfriend last year, uh, and we always we always had fun figuring out just from the looks who's an English person and who's a German person. The and English person is the one with the sunburn usually and t tattoos. Yeah. Like so much tattoos, it's unbelievable. <laughs> you've got um, you've got the southern English again. There's a divide, but you've got the the people from the south of England um who will be very loud usually, um and they always, always like when when they're abroad. You know those um those punch ball things like with the, where you put money in and there's like a punch ball and you get a score. Um, the the people from the south always love those. I don't, I don't know why they're always like crowded around those um whereas the northerners will probably be at the bar or just getting some burned like there if, if you see someone pink on holiday he'll be from the north of england <laughs> good question from van dutch what kind of pools does stuntmen go to <laughs> where naked men are waiting i mean i'll, I'll do my research before i'll go on trip advisor and find out where the most naked germans are and then I'll yeah, I'll head there. It's an advisor for a nice little trip, I guess. Wunderbar <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, says German footballers are also overly tattooed. It, it, it's footballers on the whole are yeah. uh, they're they're all tattooed. Um, yeah. I always wonder when they get them done because the seasons are long, and you wouldn't imagine them, especially with like leg tattoos and stuff. Because I've I've got a few tattoos, and yeah. they take. Take a few weeks to to fully heal. Do you know what I mean where they don't hurt if you hit them, kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So if obviously if you're a footballer and you're going into tackles and, and challenges and stuff, you don't want a fresh like huge tattoo I because it you know you, you could scratch it, you could hurt it, you, you know it's going to be scabbed over. So I can't see them doing them like in the season. But then the season ends, they'll go on holiday for a couple of weeks. Well, you're not supposed to have tattoos out in the sun. Um, yeah. you know, a fresh tattoo. And then they'll come back and, and go to. So I, I always wonder when they when they get them done. Um, but yeah, the 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 most most young footballers now are heavily tattooed. I, I guess they might pretend a little injury, a yeah. little stomach illness. Yeah. And then they're out two weeks, can go to party, yeah. especially the South American players and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. But they have, they have them all over, don't they? They've all the kind of the necks done and and yeah, the, the whole thing. Um, but yeah, it just tends to be a. I, I won't, I'm going to wonder what a lot of these players are going to look like when they're, you know, 60, 70 years old or whatever, with like huge neck tattoos and tattoos all down the legs and stuff. But, yeah, um, I guess it's not healthy. But I think if you don't have like spiritually very bad tattoos of demons and shit, I guess I don't know. I'm not an expert. We actually. Have have a, hey, uh, a stuntman. We actually have a 
Braunbär ah. in Düsseldorf, ah. which is we which has a tattoo studio. Oh, okay, and he's cool. A bear. Cool. No, I'll have to visit him. I always try and get a tattoo um, when I've been on holiday, um, just as a kind of like an excuse to get one. You know, I'll, I'll just get small ones like up my arms and stuff. But it's and it, and it's kind of like a like a lasting memory if you like. Like I I, I got that from there. Um, so, so yeah. Like an addiction. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what holds. It's just it's just um it's it's something I always do on like the last day of the holiday. Um, I'll go and I'll go and get a tattoo. Um, but yeah, it'd be cool to get one in Germany, especially by a bear, that'd be, that'd be good. Um, let's have a look, we've got a question here, um, Skull says, tell them about when you got mugged in Spain, like <laughs> what, yeah, that's, um, I was in Tenerife. Probably in Barcelona, was it Barcelona? No, no, I, I, I went to Barcelona, um, for the first time last January, it was my wife's 40th. And she'd always wanted to go to Barcelona, so we went to. We, I took her away for three days, three or four days, um, and I'd read about all that before. I went, they were like all the muggings in Barcelona, and like you have to put your backpack at the front so no one can go through your your, your bag and stuff. Um, never saw anything when I was over there. I thought it, I thought it was a beautiful city. I never never saw any trouble or, or anything. We were all kind of like wandering around at night and you know going for a few drinks and stuff. Never never saw it. Um, no, I was in Tenerife when when someone tried to mug me. Um, Tel Aviv, Israel. No, no, te Tenerife. Ah, te ah Tenerife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, te Tel Aviv. They don't try and mug you. They just take your money off you as soon as you go in, and it's just accepted. They, they <laughs> don't think they've got to, to mug you. Um, yeah, no, I was I was in Tenerife, and they they have. Um, they, they call them lucky lucky men. So basically, they they're, they're like big, like six foot three African men, um, and they sell all the 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 stuff you know on the streets. So they sell like lighters and key rings and yeah. and all this kind of thing, glow sticks and stuff. Um, but they'll also sell weed and you know anything that you want really. But they're yeah. quite aggressive as you as you go. So we were going out one night and um, they sort they sell a lot of like gold chains and and you know that this kind of thing yeah. um and one of my friends he's, he's like oh, i want one of those gold chains so, I'm like, <laughs> so it's like it's not real gold it's like it's just crap like don't don't buy one but no no i really i really want a gold chain so like we've been there like, like a, about a week or so and we were coming out of a, of a nightclub and then one, one of these lucky lucky men's there so he, he's like stops us so i said no no i'm, I'm fine i like walked off i turned around and my mate's talking to him because he's trying to buy a gold chain off him um so i'm just like waiting around the corner and then one of these other like african men walks over to me so he's like you want you want a gold chain so i'm like no 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 i'm fine thanks so you, you want some weed it's like, no no i'm fine so like you want you want a knife so i'm like no 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 i'm fine so like you give me your money then they are not like, that heavy they should always have alcohol in case english people are coming <laughs> exactly. around so he's like, um, so he's like, you you want a knife? So I'm like, no. So you give me your money. So I'm like, what? So he's like, so then he pulls out of his like his pants. He pulls out this like huge, like huge, like a, like a machete, Whoa. like out of his out of the front of his pants. So you you give me your money. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, but I'd always, uh, you know, when you, you when you go out drinking, you you I don't know if you did, but you you put your taxi money in a different pocket. So that you wouldn't accidentally. So when you had a few drinks and you're just going up to the bar and spending money and stuff, like so you didn't accidentally spend your taxi money. So I'd, I would always that keep. Sounds, my... That sounds like quite a habit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, this was before everyone was using cards and stuff. It was just it was just cash. So you, if you spent your money, you'd spent your money. You you had to walk home then. Yeah. So I'd, I'd kept my um, I'd kept the taxi money back to the hotel in, in one pocket. It was only like like ten euros or something like that. So I took that out. So it's like, this is all I've got. Mm -hmm. um, so he's like, okay. And then gets one of these gold chains, like a gold bracelet, puts this gold bracelet on me, gives me like two euros change and walks off. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, because like, I've just been mugged. But at the same time, like I've got a gold chain and change from him. So I'm standing. So then my mate walks around the corner and he's like, he's got the exact gold chain that I've got on. So he's like, I've got you one, I've got one. 
<laughs> You've um, not been marked. That's racist. It was just a <laughs> selling strategy, you know. It's just selling. <laughs> well, I made him down, so he's like, he's dead pleased himself. So he's like, he wanted 20 euros for this bracelet. I, I only paid 15. Like, I got him down to like 15 euros. So I'm like, I, I paid eight for mine at knife point. <laughs> and you pay like 15, like, by choice. So anyway, like we get in the pool the next day. I, I take a mine off, and like he, he's still got this gold brace on. He gets in the pool the next day, comes out like his whole, all of his arm is green. Like there's no gold left on this bracelet at all. It was obviously just like just cheap crap. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you it, just as a sales thing, if you want to go and get something cheaper, just get mugged first, and then you'll you'll get change. Sounds promising. That's uh, an advice people should take for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So have you been to Barcelona? What? Have you been to Barcelona? Yeah, and I've been. They tried to rob me in Barcelona, mm -hmm. but like uh, of the uh, hidden, uh, the hidden kind, you know, tried right. to grab my uh, into my pocket. But I, yeah, I that's what that's why I asked you if it was in Barcelona because I felt like they were even more like sneaky little robbers and stuff running around. Was it on that main street, you know, with all the shops and the market and stuff on it? I can't remember what it's called. Um, but there's like there's like one main street, isn't yeah. that, that goes up? It's about like... Um, I don't remember if it was on that street, but there were a lot of people walking around for sure. No, I, I, I thought it was a beautiful city. I was really I was really surprised, actually, like pleasantly surprised. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. Just how nice it was and, and like how much there was. Because obviously you go and see the, I can't remember what's called, a big church that's like at the top of the hill, like the big old church. Um, you go and see that, and then you go and I went to like the Barcelona Stadium, and like, just, but just wandering around the streets and stuff, it was so so beautiful. It was a lovely place. Yeah, absolutely, that's true. But again, also the no, Familia. Well, it seems it seems to be across Europe. There's the cities like that where where the the architecture and and the just just the, the cities themselves are so nice. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah. the, the people that that they're, they're there just don't appreciate what they've got. I don't know. I, I haven't talked to the Spanish people that much. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they appreciate it or not. But a lot of the southern countries, I think they they have a different mentality. Spain, Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, South America, it's a, it's a little more, I think, instinctive, relaxed, uh, as Owen told, like that the white Europeans, the more northern or are more like maybe mind based or a mix between mind based and heart based. And the more south you go, the people are more heart based, less mind based, I guess. It's interesting. I mean, part of it, I suppose, is survival. Um, because you know, obviously, they don't get the winters that we have further north, and and you know, traditionally, so you know, the the I suppose the whiter you are, the more you have to plan, the more you have to think of like months ahead rather than weeks or, or days or whatever. Whereas in in the Mediterranean stuff, every day is the same pretty much. You know, the weather's always good, so you don't really have to plan that much ahead. I guess, yeah, that's one of the big reasons for sure. Mm. So how do you um how do you see the future of of Germany as far as like Germany as a whole as 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 the nation do you know do you see it kind of getting broken up at all or or getting almost almost kind of like a a, a divide in culture like within Germany because I think there's there's in England especially there's a definite north south divide now in culture um you know do, do you see that, that Kind of growing in Germany or anything? Or? I think not between Germans, but I think uh, two cases might happen, two scenarios. I right. think either like a lot of Germans and migrants are, I mean, naturally you want to move where your own people are. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't matter which nation you are, where you come from, where your people are, you always feel like most home. Uh -huh. And I think it might happen that some regions of Germany have like Germans, some regions have maybe different people, mm -hmm. or 
maybe if Germany goes into a huge economical crisis where no social welfare is happening anymore and no jobs, very tough life, like Owen also predicts for the US, uh -huh. I think millions of uh, the immigrants, uh, of the migrants might leave Germany again because they can be poor in a warmer country too, you know. Mm -hmm. Six months a year, we have like not the greatest weather in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much like in England. I mean, six months is very good, very great, like in England too, probably, but a lot of rain, snow, very cold the rest of the year. Yeah, the people are not no, it's not going to the healing place, is it? It's, it? As far as like, if it if it's all going well, like you said, for the immigrants and stuff, then it's fine. But if it if it starts that's going badly, then yeah, that, I think they'll, they'll they'll naturally want to move south, um, you know, and then at least they can have bad, a bad life in the sun. I think so, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? We will see. But uh, I mean, this I mean, depends on what communities are emerging and how the communities, the new awakened so-called communities, are able to to build themselves. Like for example, the Amish were able to build in America. Mm -hmm. It depends. Uh, I think things are in motion right now, and it's tough to predict. How do you see the um, the German the German bear scene? Do you see it growing, or, or do you think it's kind of like stabilized now? Or, or... because obviously the the more people who I think the more people who who know that. That there's other German bears out there, then it's it's you know if, if if someone thinks well there's only really me in Germany who watches Owen and stuff so but if they know that there's a group of you yeah then it's only yeah. you know then that naturally kind of grows doesn't it yeah absolutely people want community people are very thankful and happy that they find like-minded people mm -hmm. and uh, the community stabilized after it grew a lot and the meetups happened and we even have like i hope i can show it to you before my phone battery runs out yeah. but we have like a very cool uh bataria uh symbol in germany All right like, one moment <clears throat> uh, uh. Then um, that video that you sent me over to Owen as well today, so hopefully he's, he's seen that. Um, you know the, the 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 promo thing for your for your meetup. Um, how have we lost uh, uh, Rhineland, or or is he still here? Because obviously I couldn't see at all. Um, and I. I can't hear him. I can't hear you if he's still there, but, but yeah, if you can just let us know in the chat um, if I'm on my own now or if he's still here. Yeah, if you can just let us, I'm on my own. All right, thank you, Ted. Um, I mean, we're, we're going to have to end in a second anyway, because obviously Owen will be coming on in, in 10 minutes or so. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. So hopefully we'll get him back on again in, in a couple of weeks, and then we, we'll pick up where we where we left off here. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, I think I've got to all the, all the questions. Let me just double check it. Oh, I'm dropping everything. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, there was just yours, Joe, about um, Owen reading his letters. That's the only one I, I didn't get to. Um, yeah, next time I'm trying to try to be less gay. Joe, you're trying with the banter, and I appreciate it. I get it. But really, is that what, is that what you're going with? Try to be less gay. Is that is that your you think, but whatever. Sleepy House liked it. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Scarlet says um, he got his cock. <laughs> he got his cock out and had a swastika. <laughs> it's, it sounds painful, but I don't know. Is that that's probably the worst place to have one, um, unless it goes all the way round. I suppose if it went all the way round, then fair enough. But I probably have mine just above it, like in the uh, in the the, the puber region. Um, well, you had so much gay content. What else can I say? Yeah, I mean, I'm not even gonna bother, Joe. Not even gonna bother. This is this is what's called culture, Joe. This is like you, you, the Europeans who have been around for thousands of years. Um, this is this is culture that we're talking about. Um, not your backward country that's been there for like five minutes. Right. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you for turning up thank you for i know it was a, a weird time to do it. i actually quite like doing it this time because it, it obviously i'm not staying up so stupid o'clock in the morning i mean to do streams for the special by americans um so yeah we'll try and get more europeans on um and we'll, we'll try, try and do them at, at, at a more reasonable hour um i think i'm ryland's back i think it was one second um except Hopefully it lets me um, accept you in. One second, people. If not, I'll try and send. Uh, I'm going to say you turned on video. Um, are you are you back on or? I, can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I, I still can't see you, but I can hear you. Yeah, there's like. <clears throat> can you see me? No, I still, I still can't. It's still it's still spazzing out with that. But no, as long as I can hear you, it's fine. Um, yeah, I have. Yes, like has huge problems with my phone. Yeah. Uh, well, no, uh, like my phone doesn't load properly when I um, I re think I have to get a new one. It's like so complicated. I I was loading it for half an hour now uh, when we started when when we talked, mm -hmm. and it was at one percent the whole time. And when I showed you my T-shirt. Uh, the bear community T-shirt, Bataria Germania. Right. I I wasn't the 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 cable went off and it went directly out of energy. I'm sorry. It might be um it might just be a cable. My my phone cable um tore a couple of weeks ago, so I have my my old phone cable, and it it basically it, it it charges it if I'm not using it at all. But if I'm using the phone, it just kind of like keeps the charge there, so it doesn't it doesn't die, but it also doesn't charge it. Um, so it might just it might just be cable rather than your your phone itself. But. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah. It's surely the phone. I I already bought new cables and everything. Oh, I right. think I have to clean. Yeah. I have to clean the the spot where you put the cable in, maybe somehow. But I'm. My technical skill or my my skill with that kind of stuff, my knowledge is basically zero. Like mm. totally. I'm, I'm sorry, I, mean, I hate technology. I hate anything electrical. I can't I can't be bothered <laughs> with any of it. Um, I was saying when you um when you'd gone off, like well, hopefully we'll get you back on in a couple of weeks, and then we can go like you know obviously now we've we've kind of introduced you, you know we can go more in depth into some of the things we were talking about. Yeah, it would be cool for sure. Yeah. Um, and hopefully I can see you next time, and it <laughs> makes it a little easier. Yeah, thank you a lot for the invitation. I thought, uh, I don't know, maybe I, I didn't do the best job representing the German bears today, but I thought, like, I was just writing in the Hanging with Bear groups. If somebody wants to talk, wants uh, to know something about the German bears, and then you answer it, and it was pretty cool uh, that you had me on the stream and that it was so easy and laid back. No, I mean, it was, it was great having you on. I think you've done a great job, especially people don't always appreciate this, but especially as it's, you know, obviously we're communicating in English. I've got a weird accent, which isn't the, <laughs> isn't the easiest to understand. It's still fine. It's still fine. I met uh, 
people that I couldn't understand really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, no, I've, I've really enjoyed it, and it, it's always it's always tricky at the first the first one because obviously you, we've got to get through the kind of like you know how you how you came to be a bear basically, um, but also we've got a lot of other things that we you know we want to touch on. So the 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 more that you you want to come on, then great, you know we can we can then just go into depth in each in each one. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's always it's always tricky, and especially because we knew we had this like limited time today. Um, because of Owen's yeah. stream coming up, so you're trying to like, yeah. I'm trying to fit everything in, or as much as in as I can, without kind of going into detail on anything. Um, yeah, I think we we went a bit off topic, uh, but uh, it was we always it doing was still my a cool stuff. ride. Yeah. It was still a cool ride through a lot of stuff. No, it's, I, I I struggle to stay on topic because I'll just <laughs> what about this, and then we'll just like talk about something else for a bit. <laughs> Um, I, I think we could have talked about football like 20 minutes more even. I can, <laughs> I can talk about football all day and all night, but I, I, I know the Americans so. don't. <laughs> the Americans can't play football, so they don't like it. Um, they, they have to stick to the, the children's games. But um, Yeah, yeah hopefully, hopefully jump back on in, in a couple of weeks, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll pick up from where we left off today. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. But the German... The German German bear team sounds like it's sounds like it's great, and I I, I believe you if you when you say you've taken over from Ireland. I know you were joking, but I think it's having seen that video that you sent me as well. Um, I mean, it, it it seems like there's something definitely growing there. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. And uh, we are a big part of it because nobody else. We are a few bears that are pushing it. Meetups, mm -hmm. new people bringing showing own and all that stuff and organizing stuff and uh, i think it bears fruits because everything that you do that that has a good purpose i think it will bear fruits sooner or later yeah definitely i mean that's the, that's the thing we've still it feels like we've we've been kind of doing this for a while and stuff it's still only a few years like grand scale of things that's true um, and you know it, it does take time, and it does take it, ta it takes time to gain that trust with each other and stuff. I mean, I think the the good thing with the bears is, is, is there's kind of like an expectancy or like a, a, an expectancy that you're a decent person if you've come this far into it, um, where you're actually wanting to meet up with people and stuff. Then you know, then there's an expectancy that you're a decent person, um, yeah. and that you can take a joke and you know all all these kind of things. So it, it those those things those barriers have already kind of been knocked down but it still takes time and, and trust and stuff you know to to build it to be yeah you know to be bigger than a few meets you know a few times a year um I mean, who knows maybe if the whole communities are growing maybe we have like a country what what is it called intercontinental intercountry exchange yeah. or whatever is building you know Exactly. I mean, there's no, there's no reason why. I mean, if you see what's going on in America, I mean, I, I, I do have a must be nice kind of mentality when it comes to American bears because they, they, they do put the effort in and they are traveling all over and, and stuff. Um, and I mean, in England especially, the, there's the reluctance to to have any bear meets and stuff just because, like, I know it's an hour away, and there's that kind of like <laughs> mentality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, I, I see Americans traveling like three days to go to bear meets and stuff yeah. um but yeah yeah i think i think if we can get over that bit and then you know the, the um, europe and america are kind of similar sizes you know germany's not that far away from england you know especially on a plane it's a couple of hours um yeah, you know, there's, there's no reason why we can't do that kind of thing um you know and have our own kind of european bit but hopefully i mean by car by car yeah. it's probably Probably seven, eight hours or something. Yeah, I would definitely. guess. Um, well, that's it. I mean, you know, you can find neutral ground. We can. I mean, we we may, we may as well just take over Switzerland, and that can be our that can be bare neutral ground. Um, yeah, we can divide it too. Every everyone can meet in Switzerland. We get the German speaking parts of Switzerland, and you get the shitty Italian speaking parts and French speaking parts. We can have. Uh, we'll have the banks. Because we'll we'll take over the bank part, so you can have the you can have the German speaking, and then the yeah, that's the gate. Fun. Have fun with the banks. We take the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Joe says it takes me 12 hours one way from my house to Mountain Grove, Missouri. Exactly. That's what I mean. That as much as I kind of like slag off, I don't slag off English bears. I just, I just wish there was more of a bear community, if you like. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'd be, I wouldn't travel 12 hours for a bear meet in England. So you know, best of luck to you, Joe. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's no reason why why we can't. It's just. Again, no, it just takes time. Do you know what I mean? It takes it takes for a, a, a few English bears to get together, a few German bears. I don't know if yeah. there's any in France or not. Or... The whole thing, the first meetup is the most important thing. Then the energy at the meetup between the bears. The atmosphere is always great at the meetups. And I guess it's the same in England, in Ireland, wherever. And from there on, you can develop everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, the English bear scene is, is so kind of quiet that Scouser may have had to go over to Ireland a few times to, to our bear meet. Um, okay. And I, I loved them, like loved every second of them and it's, it's it's like you've known these people for years even though it's like the first time you've, you're physically meeting them. Um, you know, they, they, they are just like old friends, you know, and, and I know it's like a cliche but that's that's genuinely how it feels. Like you, you you do anything for them and they do anything for you. It's just it's just kind of like this nice, relaxed atmosphere that you kind of you don't get anywhere else. Or I, I I certainly don't get anywhere else. Yeah, that sounds cool. Absolutely. Um. Okay. Well, I think Owen's coming on in a sec, so we better we better wrap it up. Um. So yeah, but definitely, well, I'll, I'll get in contact with you in a bit, and we'll sort out something coming on in in a few more weeks or something, and then we'll we'll pick up where we left off. Sounds great to me. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, so I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, have a nice evening, Stuntman Bear, and uh, see you soon. And all the all others. Right. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, right, everybody. Um, have a great week. I think Joe's on tonight. Um, so after Owen stream, so jump back on and and Joe's on. Um, who are you on with, Joe? Just just stick it in the chat if you're still here. Um, I can't remember who, who you're on with. Um, so yeah, jump in, see see Joe's stream. Um, don't forget to check out shirtsaloon.com before St. Patrick's Day because that's um, when the offer on the first run of uh, of Hanging with Bears merch ends. So they're a little cheaper just as just so we can get some orders in. Um, all the all the profits go to the campgrounds. Um, so yeah, shirtsaloon.com, go and have a look there, go and have a look at the, there's hoodies, t-shirts, zip-up hoodies, caps, printer bears doing all the, all the, um, production of them, wobbly bears done the design, so it's all, it's all bear stuff and all the profits go to the, to the campground, so yeah, go and check that out before St. Paddy's Day, which is, I think, Saturday, is it, Friday or Saturday? Um, Dump Trailer Bear is tonight's guest, um, so yeah, join Joe straight after Owen Stream or, or soon after Owen Stream. Um, right. Thank you, everybody, and I shall see you next week. I've got Yogi Bear on next week um, from Israel. So, again, it should be another, another exciting stream. So join us then. Thank you.